Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is a quick and dirty, some hardcore sprut cam. Uh, it's actually a great example. We just did that video on HSM Express where I sort of talked about, hey, this is gonna work for a lot of what I do and I don't do a ton of 3D work. And it's funny, because when I think of 3D work or complex 3D machining, I usually think of things that are much more different than this. When th what this is is a simple part. It has a gentle sloping curve that we want to machine and then we want to machine a radius or break the edge of that curve. And Sprout Cam does a great job of this, but I will admit it took me uh, a little bit to figure out, especially that 3D chamfer. And there were some tricks I picked up along the way for how we uh, best machine or efficiently machine that 3D taper as well. So with that, let's dive in, take a look. Okay, here's my part. Now, you can see we've got the two 3D contours, if you will, and then a chamfer running along a 3D edge. So, I've created three roughing water lines, which we'll walk through quickly. This is a half inch roughing end mill. It's gonna hog out most of the material. As you can see, we are leaving 10 thou of radial stock. Then I come in with a quarter inch finishing end mill, and what I've done is I've selected those two faces as the face option here, and we've set a quantity of eight, and did I choose a scallop? No, no. Um, and what that will do is it'll rough out a lot of this material, be and I'll show you because if you don't do that, when we go to finishing plane it, you'll, you'll see that that first roughing water line with the half inch rougher leaves a, leaves a lot of material um, that we still need to remove. So by doing um, this operation, we stair step that down, which will improve the chip load. And then I do a final roughing water line with that same quarter inch finishing end mill, which is just gonna go clean up that 10 thou that we left around the part like so. So now we need to do the 3D stuff. So finishing plane, choose, let's make our, choose our tool first. We're gonna do a quarter inch ball end mill five and it's all I need to do for now and we'll just choose one of these faces click face and hit run now pretty cool we actually have working G code and if we simulate that it should knock on wood look okay yep well actually it doesn't look all that great to be honest with you uh, but it's um, not bad actually the problem is that let's see here it should be able to look better let's add that face maybe that'll improve it <laughs> there we go so that looks better it's cutting a little bit here because it's cutting into that existing chamfer but here's the thing um there's a lot of you're cutting a lot of air and it doesn't it just doesn't look right now what we can do to improve it a lot actually is increase it by doing like a one thou scallop but now you're spending all that much more time cutting air so this is actually a simple fix all you've got to do is trimming under the roll type again this is one of the things i talked about in hsm express which i hate to say it but i like it because what the heck is a roll type why how am i supposed to know with edges roll type with edges that doesn't you know maybe it makes sense to some people but as a layman, and that's what unfortunately, or for better or worse, a lot of us are laymen, um, you're not, Sprout Cam is not helping me learn how to do this. Um, I actually didn't even think to look. Um, the, the help file is not half bad. I feel like uh, I don't consider myself a stubborn person. I'm certainly willing to ask for help, but uh, I, I have not generally found that Windows help files are the go-to option. Um, so roll type defines the necessity of avoiding peaks and edges of the model when machining the volume using finishing machine. Yeah, it makes sense because I now know what it does, but I'm going to go ahead and say that that's a pretty shitty explanation, pardon my language. So what you need to do is change it from edges to surfaces only. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically keep the tool on the surface and avoid cutting all that air. Look, now we're not cutting that air. So quick simulation. Boom. Uh, looks a lot better. Okay, so yeah, now you can see that that actually doesn't look half bad. Now... But furthermore, what we can do is, or what I'm going to do if I to actually make this part, is I'm actually going to increase the scallop to like one ten thousandth of an inch, which I, guess, I know sounds crazy. And we're going to come back and play with this angle in a second, but that's going to give us a much finer toolpath. So 
that's great, but instead of going on this zigzag, I want to kind of I want to kind of hug this curve. You know, think of like skiing down it and uphill it. So let's just start trying here. We go to 30, see what that does. Oh, that was pretty, I, no joke was lucky. So now, in my opinion, we've got something, or at least I've hopefully shown you guys enough that you can tweak this um, as you see fit. Although, let's see what's wrong with uh, maybe the contact point of the tool, make sure we're okay here. Boom, boom. Okay, yeah, it's just different contact point on the tool. It looks, you can't, looking at the toolpath, you can't rely on what the toolpath looks like because of the spherical nature of the tool. So I call that a pretty big win because, again, by removing the all the air on the left and right side, we can increase the resolution without materially increasing the machine time, and we've got some decent work. So let's just duplicate that, copy, paste, and let's change it to the other one. I'm doing them as separate because I want to change the angle because again the 30 degree angle here is not the one we want so let's try you know 100 thinking that that's almost 90 offset. Oops. Go back to 70 see what that does. Okay sorry I was playing around off camera to not waste your time and I had to go negative so negative 30. Um, let's look at that if we think about that um, I guess that makes sense. Um, 45 would be about like this, so it does, I guess I can justify 30 and negative 30, um, you know, whatever. Experiment with it and see what you get, but that looks good. Now, this 3D contour, I don't call it that because that's not the app we're going to use. This really threw me, and I got to give a shout out to Tormach. They helped me uh, figure this out, so I uh, absolutely want to give credit where credit is due. Finishing Morph. Never used this before in my life. Um, it's not hard, it's just not intuitive. So. I guess the point of this is it lets you morph two curves and cut in between those two curves and get good surface finish, if that all makes sense. I'm just going to tell you how to do it, and, and hopefully that's intuitive enough. So we select the first curve. It doesn't matter which curve we pick here. First curve. Don't click the second curve. Oops. Second curve. Now you've got to join these two together, and that's going to be with those two end curves right there, and those are called your sync lines. And then we select these faces. Oops, actually, you know, I'm going to turn off the curve, so I'm only selecting faces here. Boom, 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 boom. And then have that be machining surfaces. Now, we're going here, we're going to do a quarter inch end mill till 200. And I think we're going to do a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, we do need to do more. So uh, go in here. Strategy is along. That's because we're, well, it looks, that's intuitive because it's running along instead of across. So that's good. I like that. Step, I'm going to change it to like 100 thou or actually 50 thou should honestly work. Tool axis. Because we're machining on a Tormach, which in this instance is just a three axis machine, we're not using the fourth axis, we have to do a fixed because the tool axis orientation, you know, our tool can't move relative to the part in the spindle. It can't go at angles like a fourth or fifth, fifth axis thing. So if you've got a five axis, more power to you. <laughs> go ahead and play around with these, but fixed for us. Contact is, I got my notes here. We're going to have the tool containment be contact. Center would be the center of the tool. I think contact means anywhere along the tool, which is exactly what we want because a ball end mill has that flexibility. Inside would be the um, only inside the curves, and outside would only be outside, I believe. So contact it is. We're going to actually change it to climb only for a couple reasons. I'll show you in a second. So if I look, I think yes, that gets us our toolpath. Now I can't get it to only do it in one pass. So if we take a look here, we wrap it up to it. We've got our right side done. Now those may have. Nope, doesn't look like those touch the curve. So slow down here and simulate this. Boom, boom. Now we're basically good for, in terms of having it be a broken edge or chamfered edge, uh, works for me. That second pass seems unnecessary. You can leave it, but um, I asked Tormach, I said, well, look, what if you've got a really long curve and you really don't want to, um, you don't want to have it in there? It's a waste of time. And this is a production run where you're taking the time to set all this up. So this is something I learned. It's pretty interesting. You can go into simulation, expand this morph, expand 
uh, let's see here, level one. And this is why we, by doing it as a climb, it makes it two discrete strings here. You can see we've got the two. Did I just screw something up? I don't think so. No. Um, so what that lets us do is we can take the second one, we can just delete it. Pretty cool, right? Now we're left though, if you look, with this cur thing right here that we don't want. So I think that's, yeah, that's actually nice. When you click on it, it takes you there. So what I did was I went into the bottom of the first code and I just jogged through and we see, okay, that line of G code is the, I think, rapid, rapid in. So delete that, don't need that feed rate thing. And then that leaves us with this, which we delete. And now we have, should be one pass. Boom. Um, you have to be really careful because when you start doing this manual deleting of lines and G-code, I think you massively increase your risk of, of collision or crashing something. So buyer beware on that. I also have struggled to get this to work with the chamfer tool. Um, so I'm using a ball and mill in this example. So sorry, I don't have a better explanation than that. And what else was I going to say? Oh, and apparently and this is kind of a bummer when you, if you regen, um, like if you lose, if you do something that causes this to, let's just try it here. If you reset it, reset everything and rerun it all, I think you get that second line back, which makes it a little counterproductive because, yeah, exactly. A lot of times I have to, for whatever reason, regen stuff. But anyways, hopefully that was really fun and hopefully you learned this a lot. Um, you guys want to cut this thing? Let's go, uh, let's go throw it in the middle and see what it looks like. Before we cut, let's take a look at uh, the PathPilot toolpaths I just mentioned in the PathPilot preview video how much I like them. And take a look at that. That's the ortho view, orthogonal, I think, or something. You can actually see the part. Like, it actually makes sense. Top view, I think, actually makes sense as well. Again, you have the parameters. Front view, uh, I am a big fan of this. So just thought you guys would enjoy that quick little preview. Okay, here we go. This is my, and I always talk about, the half-inch roughing end mill from Maritool. We're only going down in, uh, let's see, about 250. Well, not quite even. I think the z total Z depth is about 440. I should actually go to the full depth and take a narrower width of cut, especially since there's no slotting here. And that is something I've tried to focus on a lot lately. And um, I'm glad how much everybody liked the stop slotting the stupid way video. That was uh, awesome, and I've got to do more work on that. But this end mill is great. I mean, it can take a lot. And uh, I wish I was actually running it the other way. I should have fixed that to uh, have it climb mill. Oh, there it is. I guess I have it set to do both. Um, but 20, 2,800, 2,900 RPMs. And right now, I'm only running about 15 inches a minute. There you can see much better chip evacuation and less chip welding uh, when we are climb milling it won't matter because we're going to leave enough finish to clean up with the finish end mill, but uh, I would always prefer it. Uh, it sounds better, and I have, this is actually the tool that I've mentioned is a reason why I hadn't bought a tool changer before, because uh, without having flood coolant, uh, if, the, if the lines on my Trico weren't perfectly aimed at it, you could get chip weld, and that chip weld was 100% fixed if the lines were aimed correctly, so it wasn't a cutter problem, it was a coolant and chip evacuation problem. And one of the reasons why I want to make a Z height adjustable coolant thing, which should be a fun little project. I'll fast forward the rest of this one and I'll be back in a second. So again, big mistake letting that conventional mill. Um, oh well. So here we're taking the little uh, water steps to uh, stair step or rough out that contour so that when we grab that ball mill, we're not, you know, we're not hogging out material, nor are we massively changing the chip load on that ball mill as we come through. Actually, we still, still will be changing the chip load, but it'll be a lot better. Um, the ball end mill I'm using isn't actually that high quality of a ball mill either. Uh, and I have found a difference in that uh, the higher one, higher quality ones are, are better cutting tools. Kind of a cool, it actually, kind of funny, the little shape, I just whipped, whipped this up in SolidWorks in 10 seconds, but actually kind of reminds me of like the uh, Wind Hotel in Las Vegas or something. It wasn't at all the look I was going for, but kind of funny. 
So these will be long stringy chips as we take that 10 thou clearance around the part. Knock on wood, we should have a good surface finish from that. Which we do. Perfect. Okay, here is the big moment. I thought it'd be good to change the camera, try to zoom in a little. So I'm only running at five inches a minute, way too slow to be honest with you. I'm especially on aluminum with a uh, uh, It's a good question though. I don't know. I bet that's actually a coated high-speed steel fuel, not carbide. Anyway, but the point is not, uh, you know, cut recipe per se, but rather the cam and seeing what the finish looks like when we're done. Um, I'm not worried about the, the uh, facing, sorry. Not worried about the facing operation that we're doing here, um, but rather I am actually really curious to see what this chamfer is going to look like or this edge break. I just added a polarizing filter to my camera as well, which I appreciate the tips on that, trying to get rid of some of the glare but keep the, keep the lighting pretty well done. Um, so far, so good though on the tool path. Man, let's actually bump up that feed rate here. I feel like there's a little bit of glare on that edge we're cutting right now, and I wish there wasn't. You know, it's funny now that I think about it. Oh, here we go. Here's that contour. Using the, um, oh, it looks good. It looks really good. Holy cow. Woo. Um, using the angles that we just talked about, you could actually almost machine a 3D checker. Oh, I forgot to delete the second one. Sorry, folks. You can almost use it to create, you know, checker with like a, uh, with an engraving tool or a uh, 45 degree tip tool by having it go at 90 degrees to each other. Uh, okay, let's get the part out of here where we get better light and take a close look. Folks, check it out. I think it's pretty darn good. I'm not totally happy with the, you see some tool mark lines along the um, along the faces there. You could clean that up by using a larger diameter ball end mill with a finer step over and frankly even a higher quality one. So that's easily fixable. But you know what was a real win was that chamfer. And you know I wasn't sure how a ball end mill would work and I didn't know if it would create some obvious concave shape. Um, that is beautiful folks and, and reliable. What's nice is um, on something like this it appears that you can trust you know what the simulation is going to show you which i've never really had problems with but uh, that's important to know that you got confidence in it so uh, i would chalk that up as a win for sprut cam and a pretty nice job on a part and again yes it's 3d but i could see a lot of parts where you've got a little you know radius or compound sloped edge there where you want to do something whether it's machine it or edge break it and uh well that fits the bill so hope you guys have learned something hope you've enjoyed it as always i appreciate your enthusiasm the comments have been great folks really that means a lot to me sharing the video liking it all that good stuff take care i will see you this wednesday for the widget oh boy sit yeah sit yeah who's there i love you good boy Good boy. Good boy. Hi, everybody.